Potter profile on Katie Bell. Katie was born in 1979. When she turned 11, she received her Hogwarts acceptance letter to attend Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry in 1990 and was sorted into Gryffindor House. In her second year, the famous wizard Harry Potter arrived and was also sorted into Gryffindor House. Katie joined the Gryffindor Quidditch team and became a chaser alongside Angela Johnson and Alicia Spinett. Fred and George Weasley played the position of beaters on the team as well. Team captain Oliver Wood as keeper and the first year Harry as seeker. During her first ever Quidditch match against the Slytherin team, she was hit in the back of the head by a bludger. Fortunately, she did not sustain any serious injuries and continued to play. Gryffindor take the quaffle. That's Chaser Katie Bell of Gryffindor there. Nice dive around Flint, off by the field and ouch! That must have hurt. Later, they won the game with 170 points to 60 when Harry caught the snitch. In her third year at Hogwarts, Gryffindor captain Oliver Wood lectured his team on their performance before any practice actually took place. The team was removed from the pitch by the Slytherin team, who had permission from Professor Snape to use the Quidditch pitch to train their new seeker, Draco Malfoy. Katie witnessed Draco Malfoy calling Hermione Granger a mudblood, a term which shocked and angered her. She was also a member of the Dueling Club and attended the first gathering with Alicia and Angelina, where all three friends fought over Gilderoy Lockhart's cloak that he tossed into the crowd before dueling with Snape. Katie was also present when Harry Potter spoke parcel tongue to a snake conjured by Draco Malfoy that was attempted to attack Justin Finch Fletchley that year. Katie did not believe Harry was the heir of Slytherin and found the whole idea of Harry being the heir quite amusing. That year, Katie caught the Mumble Mumps. Mumble Mumps is a magical disease which makes your face and neck swell, causing them to mumble. She was often seen in the hospital wing complaining that she was bored. She also taught fellow Gryffindor teammate Harry Potter the full body bind curse. In Katie's fourth year, Oliver Wood became more competitive as Gryffindor had not won the Quidditch Cup in over seven years and he wanted to break the losing streak. During practice, Wood commented on his chases playing superbly Gryffindor had originally planned to play Slytherin first, but due to Draco Malfoy's injury, they faced the Hufflepuff team instead, captained by Cedric Diggory. When Wood spoke of the Hufflepuff captain Cedric, Katie, Angelina and Alicia started giggling and commented on Cedric's good looks. He's that tall, good looking one, isn't he? Strong and silent. The game itself did not go too well, as the players struggled against the terrible weather. Dementors came onto the pitch and attacked Harry, making him faint and fall off his broom, leaving Cedric to catch the snitch and Gryffindor to lose the match. Gryffindor's next Quidditch match was against Ravenclaw, and she scored the first goal. Soon, Gryffindor were up by 80 points. Ravenclaw started to make a comeback, but Harry caught the snitch. Katie was so pleased that they won the match, she kissed Harry on the cheek afterwards. The final match of the season was against Slytherin, which was loaded with brutal play. When Gryffindor were up by 20 points, Graham Montague had grabbed Katie's hair and made her do a cartwheel in the air. She managed to stay on her broom, but lost possession of the quaffle. As a result, Madame Hooch awarded Katie a penalty and she scored. Even with Slytherin's brutal play, Harry caught the snitch. Gryffindor had won the match and had finally won the Quidditch Cup. At the end of the year, she and her fellow Quidditch players bid farewell to Wood as he graduated from Hogwarts. In Katie's fifth year, all Quidditch games had been cancelled due to the Triwizard Tournament. When Harry was selected as the fourth champion, alongside Cedric Diggory, Flair Delacour and Victor Crumb, Katie was ecstatic. She was thrilled that Harry had the chance to beat Cedric after losing the Quidditch match against Hufflepuff last year. When Harry had won the tournament, the cheers only lasted a few seconds 
as the crowd soon realised Cedric had been killed. Dumbledore held a remembrance service for Cedric, which Katie attended. It is unknown if Katie believed Harry's story of Voldemort's return, but it is believed that she did. In Katie's sixth year, Angina was named the new Gryffindor Quidditch captain and was no less demanding than Wood. However, the Ministry of Magic had hired Dolores Umbridge to be the High Inquisitor as well as the new Defence Against the Dark Arts Professor as the Ministry refused to believe Voldemort had returned. Because of this, Umbridge took a very strong disliking to Harry and put him in several detentions, making Quidditch practice for the Gryffindor Quidditch team extremely difficult. During one training season, Keeper Ron Weasley passed the quaffle to Katie rather quickly, causing it to hit her square in the face. Fred Weasley passed her a small purple something from his pocket to stop the nosebleed, but actually increased the blood loss to the point that practice was cancelled and Katie was taken to the hospital ring by the twins. Later on in the year, many students had become fed up with Professor Umbridge, especially as she refused to teach them any defensive spells in defence against the dark arts. Harry, with the help of Hermione, set up a group called Dumbledore's Army, where students could learn and practice defensive spells. Katie and her friends joined the DA and attended several meetings. After one meeting, Katie had a run in with Peeves, who spilled an entire box of ink over her head. At the end of the year, Katie and the rest of the Gryffindor Quidditch team said goodbye to both Angelina Johnson and Elisa Spinett as they both had graduated from Hogwarts. In Katie's final year, she was the only original member of the Quidditch team left alongside Harry. However, she did not become Quidditch captain as the role went to Harry instead. When Harry held Quidditch tryouts, Katie told Harry that she did not wish him to favour her because she was an original member of the team and wanted a fair trial. Katie did keep her position as chaser alongside newcomers Ginny Weasley and Demelza Robbins. On the 12th of October, Katie went on the trip to Hogsmeade. While at the Three Broomsticks, she was put under the Imperious Curse by the Three Broomsticks innkeeper, Madame Rose Murta, who was also put under the Imperious Curse by Draco Malfoy. Katie was made to take a cursed awful necklace, which she found inside the girls' bathroom, to Dumbledore in an assassination attempt. However, when she argued with her friend Leanne, who was concerned about the mysterious package, the package ripped open and Katie came in contact with the necklace. Fortunately, as she'd only touched it through a small hole in her glove, it only caused her terrible pain and not death. She was sent to St Mongo's Hospital and spent six months recovering. At once, Katie rose into the air, not as Ron had done, suspended comically by the ankle, but gracefully, her arms outstretched, as though she was about to fly. Yet there was something wrong, something eerie. Her hair whipped up by the fierce wind, but her eyes were closed, and her face was quite empty of expression. Then, six feet above the ground, Katie let out a terrible scream. Her eyes flew open, but whatever she could see, or whatever she was feeling, was clearly causing her terrible anguish. While she was recovering, Dean Thomas replaced her as chaser, until she was well enough to return to play in the Quidditch final against Ravenclaw, and helped Gryffindor win the Quidditch Cup for the third year in a row. When she returned, Harry asked Katie if she could remember who had given her the necklace. However, when Malfoy overheard the conversation, he freaked out, believing that she had told Harry that it was him who had given her the cursed necklace. He fled the Great Hall into the girls' bathroom. In the film, after Katie told Harry she couldn't remember, she saw Draco and froze on the spot. Harry turned around and saw Katie staring at Draco, making him run out of the hall. Katie returned to Hogwarts to repeat her seventh year since she missed six months of her education due to being in recovery at St Mongo's. She was on the Hogwarts Express and witnessed the Death Eaters raid in the train looking for Harry Potter, as it was now mandatory for all purebloods and halfbloods under the age of 18 to go to Hogwarts. Katie fought in the Battle of Hogwarts against Voldemort and his army of Death Eaters. She was reunited with Oliver Wood, Elisa Spinett and Angela Johnson, who all returned to Hogwarts to fight. During the first stage of the battle, 
She was seen fighting alongside Aberforth Dumbledore, Seamus Finnegan and Leanne. The battle was called to a halt when Voldemort asked Harry to surrender himself in the Forbidden Forest or else he would kill everyone who fought alongside him. Your efforts are futile. You cannot fight me. I do not want to kill you. I have a great respect for all the teachers of Hogwarts. I do not want to spill magical blood. Katie didn't realise Harry had left the castle until Voldemort and his deputies flooded the castle with Hagrid carrying Harry in his arms, believing Harry had died to save them. But Voldemort didn't kill Harry, but destroyed the Horcrux that lived inside of him. Harry jumped up and defeated Voldemort in a final duel. At the end of the battle, Katie is seen sitting with Cho Chang, Padma Patel and Leanne, very thankful the war is over. <laughs>